In this instalment, England continues hard at war with the Dutch, and Sam begins to hear worrying news of the plague, or the great sickness as it's now in, in London. Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. I'm Tom Barclay Matchett, the London storyteller. I share the stories of the people, places and personalities that have made London the finest city on earth. I'm currently sharing instalments from Samuel Pepys's diary from the year 1665, an era with many parallels to our own. Now, please, settle in, and we'll begin. The 15th of May, 1665. And so home, and after dinner to the King's Playhouse, all alone, and saw love's mistress. Some pretty things, and good variety in it, but no or little fancy in it. Thence the Duke of Albemarle to give him an account of my day's works, where he showed me letters from Sir George Downing of four days' date that the Dutch are come out and joined, well-mannered and resolved to board our best ships, and fight for certain they will, thence to the Swan at Herbert's, and there the company of Sarah a little while, and so away, and called at the Harp and Ball, where the maid, Mary, is very formosa. But, Lord, to see in what readiness I am upon the expiring of my vows this day to begin to run into all my pleasures and neglect business. Thence home and being sleepy to bed. The 22nd of May, 1665. Up and down to the ships, which now are hindered from going to the fleet, to our great sorrow and shame, with the provisions the wind being against them. So to the Duke of Albemarle, and thence down by water to Deptford, it being Trinity Monday, and so the day of choosing the master of Trinity House for the next year, where, to my great content, I find that contrary to the practice and design of Sir William Batten to break the rule, and custom of the company in choosing their masters by succession, he would have it brought in Sir William Ryder or Sir William Penn over the head of Hurlaston, who is a knave too besides, I believe. The younger brothers did all oppose it against the elder, and with great heat did carry it for Hurlaston, which I know will vex him to the heart. Thence the election being over, over to church, where an idle sermon from that conceited fellow, Dr. Britton, saving the, the, his advice to unity and laying aside all envy and enmity among them was very apposite. Thence walked to Redriff, and so to the Trinity House, and a great dinner, as is usual, and so to my office, where, busy all the afternoon till late, and then home to bed, being much troubled in my mind for several things. First, for the condition of the fleet for lack of provisions. The blame this office lies under, and the shame that they deserve to have brought upon them for the ships, not being gone out of the river. And then for my business of Tangier, which is not settled. And lastly, for fear that I am not observed to have attended office business of late as much as I ought to do. Though there hath been nothing but my attendance on Tangier, that hath occasioned my absence, and that of late not much. The 24th of May, 1665. Up by four o'clock in the morning. And with William Hewer there till twelve without intermission, putting some papers in order, thence to the coffee house with Creed, where I have not been a great while, where all the news is of the Dutch being gone out, and of the plague, 
growing upon us in this town and remedies against it. Some saying one thing, some another. The 28th of May, 1665. Lord's Day. Went to the chapel and heard a little music, and there met with Creed, and with him a little while, walking, and to Wilkinson's for me to drink. Being troubled with wind, and at noon to Sir Philip Warwick's to dinner, where abundance of company came in unexpectedly. And here I saw one pretty piece of household stuff, as the company increaseth, to put a larger leaf upon an oval table. After dinner, much good discourse with Sir Philip, who I find, I think, a most pious good man, and a professor of philosophical man manner of life and principles like Epictetus, whom he cites in many things. Thence to my lady's sandwiches, where, to my shame, I had not been a great while before. Here upon my telling her a story of my Lord Rochester's running away on Friday last with Mrs. Mallet, the great beauty and fortune of the West, who had supped at Whitehall with Mrs. Stuart and was going home to her lodgings with her grandfather, my Lord Halley, by coach, and was at Charing Cross seized on by both, ho by both horse and foot and footmen and forcibly taken from him and put into the coach with six horses and two women provided to receive her and carried away upon immediate pursuit my lord rochester for whom the king had spoke to the lady of often but with no success was taken at uxbridge but the lady is not yet heard of and the king mightily angry and the lord sent to the tower hereupon my lady did confess to me as a great secret her being concerned in this story for if this match breaks between my lord rochester and her then by the consent of her of all her friends my lord hinchingbrook stands fair and is invited for her she is worth and will be at her mother's death who keeps but a little from her two thousand five hundred pounds per annum Pray God, give it good success. But my poor lady, who is afeard of the sickness and resolved to be gone into the country, is forced to stay in town a, a day or two or three about it to see the event of it. Thence home and to see my lady Pen, where my wife and I show in a fine rarity of fishes kept in a glass water that will live so forever and finely marked they are being foreign. So to supper, at home, and to bed. The 29th of May, 1665. Lay long in bed, being in some little pain of the wind, colic. Then up and to the Duke of Albemarle, and so to the Swan, and there drank at Herbert's, and so by coach home, it being kept a great holiday through the city for the birth and restoration of the king. To my office, where I stood and saw Simpson and Joyner do several things, little jobs, to the rendering of my closet. The rendering of my closet handsome, and the setting up of some neat plats that burst and hath for my money made me. And so home to dinner, and then, with my wife, mother, and Mercer in one boat, and I in another, down to Woolwich, I walking from Greenwich, and the others going to and fro upon the water till my coming back, having done but little business. So home to supper, and weary to bed. We have everywhere taken some prizes. Our merchants have good luck to come home safe. Colliers from the north, and some streetsmen just now, and Hamburg and Hamburg ships, of whom we were so much afeard, are safe in Hamburg. Our fleet resolved to sail out again from Harwich in a day or two. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please don't forget to add your comments, like and subscribe. Cheerio!